morning from a sunny Geneva, which is really annoying because for the past three days that I've been here, it's been absolutely pouring it down. However, we are now leaving town and we are on the road to Monte Carlo in a brand new McLaren 540C. I've never experienced a 540C before, so I'm really excited about that. And in the car on the way down, we're gonna be doing a bit of a Geneva recap. Oh, and my co-pilot is Sam from Seen Through Glass. Let's hit it. Seen through glass. Um, if you can see me. I was just gonna say, it's from seen in the dark. What is the <laughs> perfect, perfect, time perfect time to do a take? Let's wait until we get out of this tunnel. At least it's not what the, the Mont Blanc one we just went through, which is what, 16 kilometers yeah, It felt like three days. Something really daft. Yeah. yeah, so we've left Geneva. We've uh, spent two or three days there walking around the motor show. Don't know about you, but my legs and soles of my feet are killing me. I'm exhausted. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like emotionally and physically exhausted. <laughs> I know, right. It is. It's early mornings, late nights, um, but it, it's been great. But I thought I'd take the opportunity now, uh, particularly while we have a fellow YouTuber, like-minded petrol head, to do a Geneva overview. What okay. we thought of it. Um, general likes, recap vibes. General recap, yeah. Like likes, it. dislikes, like surprises. It. My overall vibe was there was actually only two new cars. Yes. Okay, I'm no, totally no, with you here. Hear me out on this, okay? Because there's lots of new cars, but when you look at them, they're actually just facelifts or yes. tweaks of. So for me, the two new cars, and one of them, which we'll get around to, might not be, 720S yep. is a completely new car. Agreed. And what I mean by that is even the chassis is new. Like from ground up, that is a complete replacement of 650S. It's a whole new car. Very exciting. And the Ferrari uh, 812 Superfast. I still grin when I hear that name because it's hilarious. Yeah. We'll discuss that car well, that's, shortly. That's going to be a big talking point we'll in this that video. Discuss that car shortly. Uh, but that, to me, I mean, okay, it's probably not classed as entirely new because it is a very heavily facelifted F12. Sure. Um, but yeah, those are the two cars which I'm, I was most intrigued in from steps forward in terms of design, architecture, new platform, etc. Everything else was kind of like how they tweaked this and made it better. Huracan Performante. We'll talk about that a little later on. Yes, we have a lot um, to discuss on that. But yeah, too. so but like I'm as interested to hear what you think about the show. What surprised you the most? First of all, what what car was were you like? I was not expecting that. Um, the Brabus Smart. I think was really. <laughs> yeah. All jokes aside. The Brabus Smart. <laughs> the Brabus Smart. <laughs> I okay. couldn't stop going over and looking at it. Like, are you laughing? But I literally love that thing. Well, I didn't even go and look Whoa. at it. So. You have missed out. It's a convertible, turquoise, Brabus smart car with 125 horsepower. Do you have any footage of this? I have footage and footage. Because I might have to borrow some to splice it in. I, I didn't even look at it. Sorry photos. about that. Don't worry. What, what, <laughs> what character traits struck you that you were most surprised at liking? <laughs> what, what was it? Was. What, did, what meant, did you surprise yourself? I meant nothing on the stat sheet. I didn't look at any of the technical information. But it was oh, turquoise God. on the outside and turquoise on the inside. And I just loved it. It's a so, hyperblank. Is it the kind of car, though, that you could get away with in the UK? You can get away with it anywhere. Okay. In all seriousness, even Shake, 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 Shake of Shake Land could not pull off the Brabus Smart car. But I want one more than anything. Okay. Um, but no, no, I totally, I'm totally with you where I walked away from the show not like super excited. No. Like, like, oh cool, I'm glad I went and yeah, yeah, yeah. but not like, oh my God, what is happening? Yeah, I know, like the industry's gone mad. Yeah, There's loads yeah. of crazy new stuff. Like to be fair, Geneva's as much a social and networking occasion as For it sure. is checking out cars. That's exactly it. Well, but we might yeah. as well talk about the A12 now. Go for Crack it. On. Yeah, yeah. So I, I made a video from Geneva kind of asking, uh, you know, other people what they thought or what their favorite cars were. Because I thought it was interesting to see yep. everyone's got different tastes. And the A12 actually came up quite a lot. Okay. And as a Ferrari nutter, uh, 
I always am intrigued by new Ferraris. Yeah. But the last few years, I feel like they've just been kind of facelifting things, yeah. adding a turbo yeah. here or there, yes. changing some lines. Yeah, and yeah. there's not a Ferrari that's come out of them and just made me go, ah, apart yeah. from the limited stuff. I'm talking about mass produced Limited cars. stuff, yeah. Um, so that 812, yes. I wasn't that bothered about going to see it. And okay. then I eventually did. Yes. I think it's hideous. And you're not the first person I think to say hideous. that. I I don't think it's hideous, okay. but I equally I'm not blown away by it. I can't make up my mind. I can't make up my mind if I like it. Sure, sure. Okay, and I guess a lot of what uh, gets me by the heartstrings is is how it drives. Absolutely. Obviously, this isn't a topic for now because static show. Um, but from what I read now, uh, being an F12 owner, one of my comments which I've made lately about it for all of its beautiful looks and sounds, it's starting to show its age. Okay. Dominantly in the gearbox area. Now, really? well, when I first had it, it was top of the game and it felt instant. When you start driving things like this, GT3, L, even their 488, the gear shifts are phenomenal. Yeah, They're bang, bang, bang. Instant. The downshifts are, are incredible. The F12 is starting to feel a little bit... A little bit sluggish. It's sluggish. It's not like single clutch. Sure. But it's not rapid response. And the biggest thing that I'm interested in that car is the 30% up and down shifts. Okay. 30% faster up and down shifts. And it's a very good point that you made that I also think, and I really don't want to offend that. Fire away. I think the 720 is ugly too. Uh, See, I, I, I think it's a grow. I think it's more okay. of a grower than the 812. Uh, ugly from the front or ugly all round? Because I will agree with you that I think the front is going to take some growing and adapting. The three quarters of the car, I think, is fabulous. Yes, I'm not convinced because they're all going to have black roofs, aren't they, in theory? Because either you get carbon or glass. In theory, yes. I unless mean, people do the whole MSO crazy option sure, stuff. Sure, but I, there's, I, yeah. it's too, a little too broken up for me. Like, I'm okay. sure it's a grower, but yeah. what, I, what I wanted to say is that I don't care. Okay. For some reason with yeah. that car, yeah. It looks so advanced aerodynamically. It's such a step on. You sort of forgive the the brutish looks because you know yeah. that it's doing stuff for the totally. performance. Yeah, yeah. The 812, for some reason, I look at it and I I don't and go like ah oh, okay. Well, yeah. that's you know I just gonna go. Why they've done that. I'm like what the hell? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like the, the front eyelids, maybe they're gonna be movable. I don't know, but yeah, it's a funny the one. 812 to me, I'm just like Ugh. well the the 720, yeah. I'm like whoa, but yeah. okay. The 720 is such a step. I mean, bearing in mind, like, everyone is asking me, you know, how do you think it's going to compare with the LT? You've got to remember, this is a 650S replacement. Yeah, Not yeah, an LT. Not an LT. Uh, the people that I've spoken to who have driven it are like, it's a it's a step on even from the LT, sure. which I am gobsmacked yeah, at. Yeah, yeah, how uh, that's possible. I think we're going to, we are in the very fortunate position that we're going to be able to drive that car quite soon. I hope so. Um, but yeah, to, to, to even hear the people saying that it is even a step on from that, I'm like, who would want a P1? Yeah, you know? yeah, like, but, <laughs> but you might you might be able to shed some light on this because yeah. in my mind, the way that I've explained it to myself and others yeah. is it's like the F430 Scuderia yeah. to the 458. Exactly. The 458 like was such a huge leap forward Complete. in every area. Well, it was a generational change. Completely. It wasn't an evolution. It was a completely different ball game. But it, the Scud is still incredibly special yeah, and amazing. Very much but so. As a Scud driver, you must have thought at times like, how do you improve on this experience? I mean, gearbox. Yeah, yeah. But do you know what well, I mean? So in fact, you didn't know that though. You, like you, you didn't know, appreciate how much a gearbox would change a, a car. I mean, people who watch my channel regularly will know I bang on my gearbox. Yeah, yeah. It sounds sound really dull. <laughs> but for me, it's everything, and it's sort of honestly, it's eighty percent of why I don't like the. Eventually, I, I think that platform has the, the potential to be fantastic, but for me, it's either it's opposite ends of the spectrum. It's twin clutch or manual or get home. Yeah, like, yeah, that's yeah, it. Like, yeah, I don't want to be yeah. hit in the head with a, with a shovel every time I shift. <laughs> you know, fair and that's what it's like with these like old school single clutch things. So, um, but yeah, 720. The bi biggest comment that I would say from those who haven't seen it yet. I mean, it's still still fresh. The pictures for most cars don't do it justice. The pictures with that car really don't. Yeah. There's so yeah, yeah. much sculpture yeah. and you don't see it until you move with you miss a lot you of move around the car, the way that the light and shadows blend over that bodywork. Well the biggest thing for incredible. me is the scoops inside the doors. Well I was joking uh, to Rob Melville, he's the uh, chief designer okay. behind that car. I was saying, people are going to lose iPhones down there. Like, yeah. <laughs> you can stick. So he demoed to me, he stuck his whole arm in the vent. 
Wow. Right, right up to his right armpit. Up, up to his armpit. Yeah. Just yeah. So that, that that's the thing, and you you do, you don't see that at all unless you're stood Not in front all. of it or, or yeah. around it. The other thing, the headlights from pictures and when you're standing far away, they look like a black void. They yes. look like this big black blob. When you get up close to them, it, the skull, it, it's like the inside of an eggshell that's carbon. And the reason for this is the radiators sit behind the lights. I've never seen anything like it. It's an entirely new type of uh, LED architecture. Oh, fantastic. Um, <laughs> yeah, and what that allows for is basically they don't have a transparent shield on the headlights. It allows air to go straight through it. The byproduct of that is they look weird. They look, they look weird. strange. They do look weird. Hopefully, when more pictures come out of the car, when spotters see it on the streets and they start taking close up of the lights, when people see that car from far away again, they'll be able to piece together what it looks like. So, now yeah. one thing which I'm very aware of is um, we have to spend ten minutes talking about a car that we both know we love. Because <laughs> yes. you're buying one, yes, and I made a video saying that it was my favorite car on the show. Yes. So let's get on to some other stuff very far quickly. Away. Yeah. yeah. Um, but let's talk about the Purple Manto. Okay. Because that is what you might call a more traditional, uh, sort of, you know, improvement of car. Improved. Lightweight, yeah. wind, exactly. nothing that radical apart yeah. from the lap time. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that, it launched in that. a very interesting spec satin orange, cool, with gold wheels. And glossy compressed carbon. Glossy compressed marvelous Which, which carbon. also looks like a kitchen surface. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit too much. It was cool when it was on the interior element of the car, the Hurricane yeah, spiders and stuff. Exactly. And when it was done in sort of I'll I'll be bold and say tasteful yeah. measures. <laughs> if you can if you can use that word. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I'm with you. I'm with you. What I my first impression of that, because I was I know there's all this controversial hype surrounding it right now, but sure. I was still very interested in it. My initial impression was that it looked like an aftermarket body kit. Yeah. It's a bit I think Lamborghini. They've always, it's such a popular car, I mean, such a popular car for aftermarket parts. Yeah. It feels like the Aventador yeah. and the Huracan have been modified so well by so many companies yeah. that Lamborghini can't keep up. Yeah. It was like when the SV came they out and it was like, it looks only, just like a body kit yeah. that we saw on Sloan Street six months ago. Yeah, yeah exactly. So yeah. whilst the performance is obviously massively improved, yeah, yeah. visually it's not that mind blowing. And so, therefore, for me, yeah. it didn't make a massive impact because you had sure. the 812. Exactly. And the 720, they were so challenging visually. And that's what I mean by there what there weren't many new cars. Like sure. Completely new. Now I appreciate, I mean, Lambo as an example in terms of the life cycle of cars are number one for dragging yeah. it out. Big time. <laughs> Behind Maserati. Behind Maserati. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, it's not that I was expecting it, it's just the, sure. just the fact of it is there wasn't that much new stuff. So yeah. on that note, GT3. As a GT3 owner, yes, uh, you know Porsche life cycle very quick. Yeah, they don't, they don't hang around with bashing out. No, it's all they stopped production of the GT3 in 2014, and we're now at early 17. So what, two, two and a bit years a bit later, years. they've got they've got a whole new flagship car. Yeah, there. So um, what did it make you think? Because I, don't, what okay. I, don't, if you're not a GT3 owner, I yeah. think you'd go sick. New GT3, get on it. If you are a GT3 owner, why would you upgrade? So I was. A little underwhelmed, yeah. if I'm honest with you. Uh, but expectedly so. You know, you only have to look back over history. Porsche has always been about evolution. Sure. The, incremental yeah, improvements, yeah, 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 incremental yeah. steps. No doubt it'll drive fantastic. It'll I mean, be incredible, so it sure. now has the four liter engine in it. It's 500 horsepower. And importantly for me, they've, they've maintained the 9,000 RPM rev sure. limit. Which is when you get up, I mean, yeah, yeah, you've driven mine. It, yeah. um, it takes some getting used to that you can actually shift that lane. Yeah, it's it does. amazing. Yeah, yeah, to be able to re educate yourself. So, to have that with more power, I think will be a great experience. Design wise, you know, it's just, it's just nice. Isn't yeah, it? it's just nice. It's, it's nice. GT3. Okay, uh, so yeah. mo moving on from the big hitters. Yes. What was like your biggest disappointment or what did you think was awful? Okay. Okay. Um, I feel the Huayra, the Pagani Huayra Roadster is just overly flamboyant for the sake of being ridiculous. But also, do you not feel like it's like four years late? Yeah. Like, I, I literally, I found that stand depressing. And there was nothing else on it but that car and an old car. 
Zonda S. Zonda, like, you know, an old, what, Zonda S? Yeah. Like, no, I 760 love or something. The Zonda, but I'm pretty sure I had one on a poster when I was 16. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's so, what I mean. It was, <laughs> yeah. but, but you know, it's around Koenigsegg, who I think blew things right. away this so year. So this is an interesting thing. Koenigsegg, I've never been that interested in. I always thought they were just like power for power's sake and yeah. quite an experimental brand, but still didn't really set me a light. Sure, no, it's the agreed. first year ever where I've preferred Koenigsegg over Pagani. Yeah. And, and they made a real impact, Koenigsegg. I mean, the quality though. So I, I went directly from Koenigsegg to Pagani. Okay. The quality and finish, and I was shocked. The finish on. I mean that green car exposed oh carbon fiber Bagara was just absolutely out of this world. Every every last detail is just yeah. sensational. When I went over to the Pagani stand, it was like the car arrived that afternoon. Yeah. They hadn't <laughs> polished it properly. Yeah. There were scratches on the gloss. And I just thought, why it, it, it was I felt weird, this it? you're gonna buy it anyway, sort of mood out there. They were like, We don't need to show we it. We don't need to show it, it's here. Done. We've we leaked it out a few weeks ago. They're probably all sold anyway. Yeah. And I don't know, I just, it was the first year that I felt that they'd sort of let it drop a little bit. From a brand that I think all of us love. I mean, I don't think there's a love single it. picture of you meet who doesn't go, I would love a Pagani at some point in my yeah. life. Okay, so. How about you? Yeah, no, no, I agree. I thought the, I, the whole Juan Rosa, I was like, whatever, guys, like, yeah. give up. Um, uh, RS5. Didn't I, like that? No, I was a big, big Audi fan. Yeah. Uh, a little insight into my life. My mum had about four S5s. Oh, wow, okay. And one of my best friends had Gen 1 RS5. So for me, that oh. car's always been kind of like... Yeah. When I was younger, that was a car I really okay. wanted. And I feel nice. like recent years between the M4 and the C63s, yeah. um, RS5's really taken a hit. Like, it's just never quite lived up to those other two. Yeah. And I don't like the new A5 shape. And then the RS5 got launched, and still, I feel like no one gave a crap. And it's sad that no one's yeah, looking sure. at it and I was like, it just, uh, uh, so that yeah, annoyed yeah. me. Um, Biggest surprises. But the things that you were like, do you know what, actually? <laughs> <laughs> um, Bentley. Right. You know what? You know what? Bentley. So, I did a video, before this video. Okay. F like five cars that I'd actually be in interested in. Yeah. New Super Sports. Unreal. Monster. Monster. Absolute monster. And, so, and do you know what? 100 grand less than an 812 super fast, and in the conditions that we drive in but most of the time, oh, way oh, more usable. Oh, you'd be massive the traction. traction being in the world. So, yeah, just it's amazing. like I, I am desperate to get my hands on even just a standard Continental GT oh, for like yeah. a road trip. Yeah, oh, God. I, I think or speed. Oh, drop head. Oh, oh. oh I yeah. think it would be just the dream. I think they're really making moves now. And why I'm surprised at that is that platform's like long in the well, tooth. Thing, right? But they have, they, they've revamped it so well. Being completely open, yeah. I went over to the Bentley stand to try and find someone to be like, can I borrow a Bentley? <laughs> That's the only reason I went over, yeah. was to be really rude. Um, and I got there and I was like, oh, what? Is it and firstly, they had the electric uh, concept. That concept was really nice. Gotford. And then, of course, the Super Sports was there. And I was like, what a weapon. Bentley! I like, know. Bentley, come on. I was surprised that they tucked it around the back. Yeah. You wouldn't have known it was there unless you knew that they'd done one. That's exactly it. And when I, I mean, I, I sat in it and I was, I was, I was, I was, I was it was a lush Lovely. environment. Yeah, very, very cool. Bentley, if you, uh, if you want two lovely YouTubers to uh, film one of your cars and tell people about how great it is, in Mallorca. Get in touch. I think they should ship it there for us. <laughs> Very good point. That's why we work together. Anyway, we are now on the road to Monte Carlo, which I'm vastly excited about. Uh, we've driven out of the grey, dreary city that is Geneva. Um, lovely in summer, terrible in winter. It's 20 degrees. 20 oh, degrees sorry. here, and I can feel it, and it's, it's fantastic. It puts you in such a much better mood. Uh, yeah, and we're going to be spending the next few days down there doing fantastic stuff uh, in these lovely McLarens. This is also my first time in a 540C, so I might potentially do a video on that where we hit some fabulous twisty mountain roads. So, uh, see you in Monaco!